Oh, it seems to be working. Yeah, from the well, maker's corner here. Have some um, uh, new equipment. Uh, equipment that I bought might be in general interest. I've been talking about a um, new camera for quite a while either for the main cam or uh, for b-roll haven't decided really which one I'll use it for yet and I watched a lot of videos online and compared as best I could prices I'm not a camera expert so I don't really know much about photography and filming and stuff but I tried to listen to those people that seemed to know what they were talking about and um, I settled on um, this one here. It's a Panasonic Lumix G GX 800K. So this is like what was it called? Uh, DC GX 850 in US, other regions of the world. Uh, it comes with a basic um, lens and then the battery and the charger unit. And the charger will be different depending on what kind of region of the world you live in or what country. And um, this is uh, 4K capable. You can uh, theoretically run up to five minutes on um, clips of 4K video. Um, not that fast, but ah, uh, still a little bit. I mean, I mainly bought it for full HD. I, I can't process 4K anyway. But I just thought so. Um, the the interesting thing is this is a bit of a odd odd camera, video camera, and I think it has a bit of a steeper learning curve than most of the cameras. Um, so if I wanted to get equivalent functionality with easier to use. I think the one would have to spend about yeah I paid around 400 USD for this depending on the conversion rate of the currency. Well if you wanted to get it really uh, I was looking at cameras around 700 USD but ah I don't know it feels a bit steep so I thought I'd try and learn um, how to run the loops with this one. Mo mo most people have been successful using this camera. I mean, you can't really beat the price. This is this this can actually do um, 4K video much better than some more expensive models. And then there are a lot of um, more expensive system cameras that can only do full HD. They can't do 4K in any in any form at all. Plus, this is very small. Um, wait a second. I don't think you can really see the size. Oh, wait. No, I'm not. Sorry. So here's my hand. So as you see, it's it's actually. This here is smaller than another than a Canon I have, the Canon pocket camera I have. Uh, that can't do uh, even that can't do full HD or anything. It's sadly out of date. It has served me very well over the years. But, um, so this one's even more compact than that. But it does weigh it quite a lot. So it's a it's a heavy sash at this, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I'll be integrating this into the production work. I'll probably upload this video to the upgrades um, playlist because this is um, applying new equipment. I think I might want to do something with the lighting now that the um, summer's over. It's it's very dark, so I, I don't get any assistance from the windows that we have here. So. I think I will have to um, invest in some some extra because my like in this video my face is very dark and, uh, and especially with this light here on the booth there in the back which is showing the cam and then it gets all the exposure gets screwed up on the webcam. <laughs> 
Yeah, so it, yeah, it also comes with a bit of a paper manual in different languages. But then you can also download a full size PDF um, version of the manual from Panasonic's website. And I've had very little time with this camera right now, like physically on it, so can't really say why. And it seems to take nice pictures though. But I still have to connect it to the wireless network and yeah, doing so this might actually take me away from the other initiatives I have ongoing for a little while. While I get up to speed with this. Uh, leave leave something in the comments if anybody wants me to give a bit of a deeper review of this um, like how, how I set it up or something if anybody's in because this will require a bit of I mean I realized that when I before I bought it and I watched all the videos about it that this um, requires a bit of manual assistance to get the best out of it so one has to actually know know a few tricks and tips to be able to fulfill the fulfill this camera's full potential but then of course one um, and that's you know, mainly in the area of uh, autofocus or focusing. Um, but then, of course, yeah, it is at least on in this market area where I bought it. It's it is the cheapest for uh, re cheapest reasonably 4K and otherwise capable system camera. You can't can't right at this spot in time. You couldn't really beat the price. And, um, yeah, maybe I'm a little bit biased. I have some other Panasonic equipment and I've been actually very happy with it. No, I'm not sponsored. Uh, Panasonic doesn't give me any money for this. <coughs> I've done all the research myself. And like anybody, I would like to buy them, buy the most feature-rich and expensive equipment there is, but, you know, it has to be realistic of what one actually um, has has money for and what one can handle and what one needs. So I think this will fulfill my needs. I do however expect that I will be buying more lenses for it. Yeah, this is an important point. This is also uh, interchangeable lenses. So you have access to a full range of Panasonic lenses for this. Um, that doesn't come with an SD card. That's one thing to remember. So I tried to a bit, but not most cameras don't nowadays. They, they don't. They don't include an SD card. If you don't, even when they call it kit, they, they often don't contain. And anyway, why? Why should? If you only get like a 16 gig memory card, or even a 30. I think that's not enough if you're going to do 4K work. So I think that probably better to leave it to the customer to buy. And then the thing is, you have different speed ratings. So if you were only interested in normal photography and taking HD video, then you would get away with a bit of a lower speed grade memory card, a lot cheaper. So I think it was actually a good, a good thing that Panasonic left the memory card out of the equation. Huh. So what am I going to do with this? Yeah. So pending activities connected to the wireless networks. Um, download their app. Um, see if the video output, HDMI video output, actually works. It should, according to videos that I've watched, it should be. There's only the issue that one needs to go into a hidden, a little bit of a hidden mode to get rid of the, to have a pure HDMI output without any camera status information being displayed but that should be be an easy thing um, you know do some like yeah decide if it's going to be the main cam for my like face or or is it going to be for I, I think I'm probably going to have it for b-rolls because I I think the webcam if I fix the lighting, the webcam still works very well for the face. At least in my level of video quality that I run. I would sooner have a better picture on the um, experiments and equipment that I'm dealing with. And, um, yeah. uh, 
audio wise it has a built in mic don't really expect much from that hasn't got an, an audio input on itself so if you want to put an external mic on it physically that's not possible but I, I was thinking am I going to go out and, and do outside video blogging with this camera mm. probably not and the thing is that the built-in audio in cameras there if one doesn't get up to relatively expensive system cameras the audio is no good anyways and uh, it's got a nice display some um, quite neat it's a touch this is different from other cameras you can pretty much do everything on the touch screen Mm. Yeah, and then you can articulate the display also. Maybe I should actually do that. Wait, go mess around with it a bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Pulling the nice display all apart. What if I just display? Hmm. screen. Oh, it has this strap also with I don't I haven't decided if I'm gonna keep it on. Take it off. Well I I put it on so it comes with it not on. <laughs> I shouldn't do this. Live adjustment of stuff. It looks like crap. As you see I'm not a camera reviewer. Anyway, that's what it looks like. So you have the you have the the touch screen can be actually angled up, so you can actually do selfies and vlogging when you can see your um, picture in the display, which is quite useful. Mm. Now it has has reasonable performance in um, full HD, and then a limited performance in the 4K. But one has to be very careful with 4K when one's looking at the specifications on all cameras because the um, you get up to relatively expensive cameras if they start to say that you can take more than five minutes on full full 4K and they cost a heck of a bit more. Um, I have. I don't know, I might be wrong, but I've understood that the 4K video encoding technology is actually licensed. So if you want to run, so it's partially a technology problem recording more than five minutes, but also it's a licensing issue. If you record more than five minutes of full of 4K video, then you need to pay the special license, which is probably owned by some big company. And that adds on to the cost of the camera. But also, you know, when you if you're going to run, I do realize if you're going to run everything that I've looked at, if you're going to run serious 4K work, then you need to have, I mean, you have to have a, a cable camera for one, which is beyond my, basically beyond my financial means right now. And um, also the thing is you might probably want to take live video out HDMI and then you need a 4K cable video encoder. And then you need a computer that can um, uh, not necessarily have. Yeah, if you would like to seriously edit 4K, then you would need to bring it in at some kind of a, raw, a more raw format than encoded video, and that means you need a much. You you need a capable computer to handle it. I, my computers aren't that. I mean, they're not that um, super duper <laughs> powerful to be able to do 4K video edits. But anyway, it's, it's nice to have a l I, I thought it would be nice to have a little bit of 4K. Also, I think that it also indicates that the camera is otherwise, probably otherwise technically very sound. 
but if they if they actually promise some level of functionality, reasonable level of functionality with 4K, then, then if one runs runs it with um, HD video, like the standard 180p, 30 frames a second stuff, then then that will probably work like unlimited and stable and everything. So. Yeah, but it it is a tricky thing evaluating cameras because you 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 get this paradigm of um, you know cost and capabilities and combinations of very many different things and there is no perfect camera basically that thing doesn't exist so you have to have your use case and your budget and then do a snapshot in time also because probably next week this is going to be a bad deal that's usually what happens with technology. So new new models come out, or a competitor drops their price. But I mean, one has to take it as it comes. I think that at least spending this level of cost, I don't have to feel like really sad if next week there's a better offer. And it doesn't mean that I need to keep this for ten years either, because it didn't cost me like a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars. So if I had a camera like that, then I would feel obliged to keep it minimum of three to five years. You know, with this camera, I can probably, I won't feel like totally depressed if I uh, if I feel the need or need, or I need another camera in two two years. Then I don't think that like divided on two years is like two hundred dollars per year on the costs. But I'm actually hopeful, but I am expecting this will require some um, technical attention. Um, which I'm not too worried about. I think I need to learn a little bit more about video, audio tech, anyways. You know. but anyway, leave in the comments if you want to be on board with, actually, I, I don't know. I'm not really into reviewing, so blogging equipment I mean there's so many people that do it so I don't know how much of the how much of this tech the integration I will be making videos about and if even anybody would be interested because it's gonna be basically my my you know, like, you know cheapo user scenario not, not sort of I don't know how many I, I, I very much selected this to fit my my situation I don't know how well that will mirror with other people out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, was there anything else? No, I think I'll wrap this one up. Um, I don't want to start going through all its technical capabilities and, and stuff because, I mean, if anybody's interested, you can look that up on Panasonic's homepage. And they can or actually search with the product name and type number on on YouTube, and you get you you get piles of reviews for it. So I think the if I if I'm going to make any follow-up videos specifically on this camera, it's going to be specifically on my setup and my experiences. Okay, so that's for now. I think I'm going to try and connect. Uh, what did I say? Yeah, connect it up to Wi-Fi, get the app running. And then I will um, try and uh, run full HD off a tripod with the HDMI output and see how that works. Now, as I said, you know, if you want, if you want to get an update on it, you just put it in the comments, and I'll, I'll come back and uh, with a video on it. But right now, I don't know how much I plan to actually talk about. Uh, how much I intend to actually talk about this? So much. And since I'm not a camera expert anyway, what do I know about cameras? I just use them. But I do intend to learn enough to you know, to utilize this camera to its full potential. I think it's it's worth it. And I do think that, uh, as I said, personal bias. I think Panasonic makes good equipment. They're, they're probably not the most hype manufacturer out there. Their marketing is, yeah. Compared to what Canon pushes, I the, the, the <laughs> not exceptional. <laughs> but uh, but I, I do think that they they do quite a good job on the tech side. 
I'm not saying Canon doesn't go good tech. Canon has excellent technology. It's just that, for my use cases, ah, it's uh, too expensive. I, I can't afford it because I'd have to go to like. Oddly enough, to push the HD, uh, the 4K capabilities that are represented in this camera, I would probably have to push the limit up to seven, eight hundred dollars. To move into a Canon system camera that can um, basically fully cover the um, 4K capabilities. No, that I don't really understand why why that's the case. But I might pick up a Canon. So, I mean, uh, I think in this YouTube production stuff, uh, uh, probably one will probably need more than one camera. That I've seen, you know, when when I have this kind of display box set up and. Then I would like to have like a good camera for the face, uh, and then then you need some like okay, you you want to show some extra electronics, then it would be good with another camera. And the, and the thing is, I as you've seen, I don't do much post processing. I mean, I'm not into, and I don't think with the content that I'm making that it's really worth spending a lot of time editing videos. So I I actually don't edit any of my videos as it is current. And I don't know, uh, XSplit can, or the software I have, can do video editing also, but I haven't spent any time learning it. Yeah. But anyway, that was exciting. Okay, I will um, check this video again, upload it if it worked, probably. I haven't decided if I'm going to upload this to the... Um, to the ma actually to the Maker's Corner Chronicles, I might update it, uh, upload it to the updates um, video section, video playlist. Oh, we'll see. Okay.